There are a lot of hidden gems in the animation industry, just lying there, waiting for someone to find them or realize their worth. That is why for today, I decided to take you guys on a journey with me to discover these top 10 greatly underrated fantasy anime. So before we begin, remember to like, subscribe, and press on the bell icon to keep yourself notified of all our latest new videos. And of course, it comes without saying, but beware of the following spoilers. Coming in at number 10 is BNA, brand new animal. BNA begins with a hooded girl in tattered clothing running through the subway, and she happens to pass by a sign reading, Let's Hold Hands, Animal Rights. Above the text is a human hand holding on an animal paw. This immediately establishes a theme. Humans and anthropomorphized animals live together, but not in harmony. Then enters a group of shady men walking down the hallway. The girl hides in fear because she is part animal. The men spray paint, beast men should die. Now we know there's discrimination. Immediately after, the girl runs past the TV, the news is on, and a reporter announces a special zone for Beastmen that have existed for 10 years. Soon after, we find out the Beastmen zone is an entire city, known as Anima City, exclusive to Beastmen. The anime shoves a lot of information down our throats so quickly you might just want to pause for a bit and digest all the information you just learned. However, just like the iceberg, this is nothing but the tip of it. There is a much more complicated story underneath, with politics, inequality, and a huge conspiracy being cooked right under their feet. Coming in at number 9 is Shakugan no Shana. I'm sure there are a few anime out there featuring parallel worlds or dimensions, but I really enjoyed the way it's portrayed in this anime. The main reason for this being that, with such a grim and maturish beginning to the anime that gave it such a depth to the storyline, the anime does also get lighter by mixing it with some other elements as well, and I enjoy these lighter moments as much as the other intense parts of the anime. And mind you, this anime does seem to make the world around the main protagonist, Yuji, to seem hopeless at the start, but it grows to become more lighthearted while still maintaining its original premise. I mean, who could blame the guy? He died right off the bat in episode 1 only to find out that some sort of artifact within him is sustaining him in his torch form until midnight of each day. And if anything happens before that, or he exhausts his existence power, he disappears forever. Coming in at number 8 is Children of the Whales. When it comes to the music and aesthetics of the show, this series screams perfection and beauty. However, this is as far as it goes when it comes to its beauty and vibrant colors. The story is a complete opposite to everything I just said. About 90% of the population on board of the enclosed small society known as the Mud Whale possesses telekinetic abilities known as Simeon, which leads the afflicted to an early death which earns them the title of the Marked. This leads the 10% of normal people to assume the role of the government, who are also referred to as Unmarked. The show opens with a somber funeral scene where the main character, Chakuro, is seen holding back tears with many other fellow mud whalers. Things only get weirder and weirder going forward from here as well. The show isn't for everybody, however it is quite a unique series to watch and it would be a bloody shame if you guys miss such a chance. Coming in at number 7 is Blood Blockade Battlefront. With these eyes, the main character is practically invincible to all trickery and deceit, though a single bullet can end him. This power isn't one used for evil or one with destructive powers. These eyes are all-seeing and allow him to see through all lies and dismantle any illusion no matter how powerful or well-created it is. The main character himself isn't a fighter, he is more of an irreplaceable supporter whose job is to help his teammates in their battles, not battle himself. He is powerful in his own right though, thanks to his abilities, his dormant one that is, which by the way he doesn't unlock until the final episode or so, and even then he still is unable to use it. His job isn't to fight, instead his job is to coordinate the battles, helping his allies gain an undeniable advantage in their fights. Coming in at number 6 is Wolf's Reign. In a dying world there exists an ancient legend. When the world ends, the gateway to paradise will be opened. This utopia is the sole salvation for the remnants of life in this barren land. But the legend also dictates that only wolves can find their way to this mythical realm. Though long thought to be extinct, wolves still exist and live amongst humans disguising themselves through elaborate illusions. But here we'll start with one of the main characters, Kiba. He has a goal and he'll do anything to reach it. But he has two distinct sides to his character. One is his proud, rash, and arrogant self that attacks anything that stands within his way. And the other is a quiet, mysterious, and observing type that is expressed when meeting new friends. For instance, 
when he was reluctant to say his name to Hige and whenever he is around Cheza, though not technically the sorrowful character one would expect him to be, in an orphaned and lonely state, he still makes sad connections to his past. He is the typical main character that anyone would love and fall for. However, the show is much more than that. It has many hidden secrets and subtle things that can completely change how you look at a character. The best part is they are mostly subliminal and take a lot of effort and concentration to find. For my anime theorist fans out there, if you try hard enough, you might even discover what happened 200 years ago. Coming in at number 5 is Haibane Renmei. This series starts off in an old home, a small village full of enthusiastic youths. The story focuses on a group of five female Haibane, which are girls, with halos above their heads and gray wings. The five eventually become six, as a new girl, Raka, falls into their world. With little tangible plots to grip onto beyond the premise, Haibane Renmei essentially revolves around the characters' journeys in confronting their own personal issues. Set against the mysterious backdrop of Old Home and the encompassing town along with the fact that, for some reason, they are never allowed to leave the town or come close to its fences. Even though a lot of Haibane disappeared mysteriously, people often have gripes about plot points and settings not being literally explained or explored. But in the case of this, the fact that the surroundings of the Haibane and their circumstances are a nostalgic haze lens focused to their internal struggles. Coming in at number four is Paprika. Calling this movie weird, messed up, and outright bizarre is the understatement of the century. Many people have watched this movie, and even though they like it, when you ask them what it is about, they'd be like, uh, I have no idea, man, but it looked cool, and it was fun, and honestly, I don't blame them one bit. After all, this movie was the inspiration for Inception, another weird as hell movie that no one was able to make heads from tails when watching it. The movie Paprika takes place between the real world and the magical dream world, where people go to in order to escape their stressful daily lives. And we are introduced to many different examples that enjoy being in the dream world for widely different reasons. This movie is quite fun and enjoyable. However, its sole plot is about finding balance. Balance between the dream world so you won't get sucked into it, and the real world. And the real world so you wouldn't become a depressed old man or lady with 200 cats that will later on commit suicide. Oh, is that a little too harsh? Well, as long as you find the perfect balance between life and pleasure, you're good. Coming in at number three is The Ancient Magus Bride. This girl was too hopeless and brainwashed. She lost any hope she had in having a normal life. Being enslaved and sold to the highest bidder in an auction can be hard and terrifying for a 15-year-old girl. However, Chisei Hattori was prepared to give herself in to anyone as long as she can have a place to call home. One hell of a rough childhood if you think about it. She is then sold off at the price of 5 million pounds to the mysterious Magus with the mask of a beast. Clearly not someone you want your freedom to be bound to. However, looks can be deceiving sometimes, and this is one of those times. You see, all the Magus ever wanted was to make the poor little girl happy and revive what hope for life she had remaining. After a sequence of teleportation, Chise finds herself in front of a small cozy cottage in rural England. Surrounded by many magical beings and creatures, the one that bought her reveals that his name is Elias Ainsworth, a Magus. These events are what sets the story of Chise in motion as she becomes the apprentice and supposed bride of the ancient Magus. Coming in at number two is Kiki's Delivery Service. Obviously, you already know from the unique style of animation and vibrant drawings who the one is behind the anime. This is one of the many masterpieces in animation studio Ghibli blessed our screens with. Kiki's Delivery Service is a story of coming to age and learning to be independent in this wide world. Being independent for the first time is a terrifying experience for anyone, but it's also enlightening, as you can learn more about yourself and others than you thought. Kiki's Delivery Service showcases those ups and downs brilliantly. From an awkward introduction to baffled strangers on the streets to starting her own business and befriending her clients. To meeting the owner of a bakery who immediately shows a keen interest in the young girl. Taking the role of a sort of mother figure to her. As usual, Ghibli movies have a wide variety of characters, each with their own unique personality and motives. I mean, even side characters seem to you as impactful characters in these movies. This is one of the many Ghibli adventure fantasy type of movies that kept a mark 
on the hearts of everyone that watched it, including me. And not including it on this list is an absolute crime. And number one goes to Wolf Children. Teenage Hana is a hard-working girl putting herself through college and all that life throws at her. During class, her eyes fall on a man who enthusiastically and diligently is taking notes. But he has no textbooks and disappears before the role is taken. Intrigued, she searches for him and learns that he sits through classes but doesn't attend a school. From what we see, he works with a moving company, delivering goods to houses. He comes to university and bums through classes to learn. Hannah works as a laundromat to make ends meet and after her shift ends, she accidentally meets him. We never learn of this man's name, but he becomes Hannah's world, and she, his. Then their worlds are joined, then broadened with the births of their children. The mother is the gift that keeps on giving, and Hannah is the best example of such a mother she left her urban society and style of life behind and settled in a more rural area for the sake of her children, and their special needs to develop and grow without having to suppress their father's side, or their werewolf blood. She indeed does struggle a lot when raising them, However, throughout the movie, she is always reminding herself of the most important things, giving her a reason to always keep a smile on her face. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I had fun making it for you. I would appreciate it if you guys would smash that like button, subscribe, comment, and press on the bell icon to keep yourself notified of all our latest new videos and upcoming projects. And if you have any cool ideas for any upcoming videos, don't be shy. Share them in the comments with us down below. And as for now, I'll catch you later. See you in the next one.